Hello, welcome back to another video of Obesity Biology. In this video, I will discuss about enzymes. Enzymes are organic catalysts. Enzymes can be defined as biological polymers that catalyze biological reactions. Metabolic processes and other chemical reactions in the cell are carried out by a set of enzymes. Enzymes catalyze thermodynamically possible reactions changing covalent bonds in specific substances. The substances are called substrates. Now there is a simple trick to identify an enzyme by watching its name. This is the first part of the name of an enzyme gives a substrate. The next part indicates the reaction catalyzed by it and this is followed by the suffix as that is a s e now i can give you an example that histidine decarboxylase is an enzyme decarboxylating histidine now let's discuss the nature of enzymes majority of enzymes are proteins some of them are simple proteins having no non protein part others are conjugated proteins they are consist of a protein part called the apoenzyme and a non protein part called the prosthetic group or coenzyme holoenzymes are the active forms of enzymes holoenzymes represent the apoenzyme bound to its necessary coenzymes or prosthetic groups cofactors are small molecules or ions that participate in enzymic catalysis of such cofactors the relatively complex dialyzable and thermostable non protein organic compounds remaining bound to many enzymes that participating in their enzymatic actions are called either prosthetic groups or coenzymes while the protein parts of such enzymes are known as apoenzyme cofactors tightly and loosely binds with an enzyme or other protein molecules in the other hand coenzyme is a small organic non protein molecule that carry chemical groups between enzymes cofactors are inorganic compounds but coenzymes are organic molecules some of the cofactors are covalently bound to an enzyme but coenzymes loosely bound to enzymes cofactors can only be removed by denaturing the enzyme but the coenzyme can be removed easily these are the basic differences between the coenzymes and cofactors enzymes consisting of a single polypeptide chain or subunit is called monomeric enzymes ribonuclease of bovine pancreas and dna polymerase one of e coli and phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase of human mitochondria are the example of monomeric enzymes enzymes consisting of more than one polypeptide chains are called oligomeric enzymes glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase and pyruvate kinase are the example of oligomeric enzymes According to the identical or non-identical subunits and their numbers in the molecule oligomeric enzymes may be homodimeric heterodimeric homotetrameric and heterotetrameric oligomeric enzymes consisting of two identical subunits are called homodimeric such as citrate synthase oligomeric enzyme consisting of two non-identical subunits are called heterodimeric such as succinate thiokinase oligomeric enzymes consisting of four identical subunits are called homotetrameric such as fumarase oligomeric enzymes consisting of four non identical subunits are called heterotetrameric such as isocitrate dehydrogenase enzymes are classified into six classes according to the reactions catalyzed by them each class is subdivided into several subclass and each subclass is again divided into sub sub class depending on different criteria involving their actions in each sub sub class a number of en enzymes are enrolled each with an enzyme commission number or ec number which is consists of four sectional numbers standing serially for its class 
सब क्लास सब सब क्लास एंड सीरियल नंबर Enzymes can be classified into six classes, and these are oxidoreductase, transferase, hydrolase, lyase, isomerase, and ligase. Now, how we can remember the six classifications? So there is a solution for it. If we remember the sentence on the hill. Uh, the first letter of on that is o stands for oxidoreductase the first letter of the that is t stands for transferase the first letter of hill that is h is stands for hydrolase and then the two terms i and l will change their place that means that l will be in the second position and i will be in the third position therefore it means that l for lyase and i for isomerase and the last l stands for ligase this is how we can remember the six classifications of enzyme now let's know how to write enzyme commission number the enzyme commission number of an enzyme can be written as the class of the enzyme dot the subclass of that enzyme dot the sub sub class of that enzyme dot the serial number in the next video i will discuss about the six classifications of enzymes in a descriptive way so is all for today thank you please like the video and share the video and please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon we'll meet you in the next video